Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Web channel. Today we take a look at the latest from the models for the next couple of weeks, which will take us into the middle to the end of March. We'll have a look at the latest from the models, of course. We're going to have a look at some different charts as well today, like you're seeing on your screen right now, which is the NAO. As there's a chance there of an increasing chance of a boulder spell developing for the middle of March. And obviously we'll take a look at everything as we go along. If you do enjoy today's video and you find it informative, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to help YouTube push out this video to more people that might be interested. Anyway, we'll start with this. So I'll quickly explain what, I, what we are looking at here. The NAO stands for the North Atlantic Oscillation. Basically, all you need to know is that if it's in the positive region, so above this zero line here, if we see the lines going positive like they have been through February into March, that Feb, um, through December, of course, then that basically means that we are in a typical westerly flow. So quite Atlantic driven, quite stormy, quite mild, wet and windy. And as you can see, that weather dominated the end of Feb into the start of March. However, the runs are deviated now. So we're seeing a bit more of a diver di diverging of runs to a more neutral, to slightly positive or slightly negative solution. There is a lot more scatter than those years ago where we were favoring a positive and a o. so what that means um is at the ground level is if we see um, a, a negative nao that increases the chance of blocking patterns developing um and if it's positive obviously like i said before the westerly winds so all to play for basically uh, with those models um, and there is some more interest for colder patterns developing towards mid-month and as i'll show you in a moment now, I want to move on next to the mean zonal winds, which this is the polar vortex at its roots. So, as you can see, if this line goes below zero, this, this line below zero is a technical SSW. So anything below the zero degree line is a SSW. And as you can see, all of the runs are going down to this minus 15 to minus 20 line. A very strong um, and very good model consensus of a major SSW event developing. Now, what does this mean? This also means in two weeks from this date, so about the 12th, 13th of March when it occurs, uh, we could see uh, we could see colder weather, we could see blocking patterns develop, we could see winds in from the east, the northeast, and we have the increased chance again of blocking developing. Doesn't always guarantee colder weather. Might not even have it there. And depending on the time of year, which is going to be late March because of two-week lag time, late March is when we'd expect any impacts. Um, which means that um, things are delayed and it's um, difficult to work out. But we'll keep monitoring, of course, as we do. We'll have a look at the um, run from the GFS very quickly. This is the GFS 12Z. So this is dated to the 4th of March. Um, so at the moment, that there's that warming, gathering pace over Siberia. This is the polar vortex at its roots, which is being stretched out to its absolute limit. Um, this is a technical sun stratospheric warming on the 12th of March, where we reverse the zonal winds. Um, and in the stratosphere and then you can see warming just continues to maintain over the North Pole and Siberia which means that the polar vortex doesn't really have much chance to um, redevelop it's kind of dissipated it's weakening as it is uh, considering the time of year it is weakening naturally anyway um, so you won't expect much of a recovery this could be the final warming so April could be a bit bad I'm afraid sorry mild lovers May is going to be good though I guarantee it <laughs> Um, anyway, let's get on with the main model runs. We'll start off with the UK Met Office run, looking at the 12Z suite of runs, and we'll get straight on with it. So at the moment, um, 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 uh, 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 what's he saying? What's he saying? Uh, <laughs> at the moment, we have high pressure sat to the north, the south. This guy, sorry everyone. Um, high pressure sat to the south, low pressures towards Greenland and Iceland, and we're bringing in the wind from a mild southwesterly wind. At the surface, it's not too bad. Might be a bit chilly for some. Um, but it's pretty pleasant. Now, these southwesterly winds continue to the end of this week. We remain in them, so southwesterly winds, even into the weekend. Although more unsettled in the south southwest, with a small cut off low towards France, Spain, and Portugal bringing lashings of rain. However, as you'll see, um, maybe indicating that um, NEO signal we saw earlier, high pressure begins to migrate nor northeastwards, or northwestwards, I should say, bloody. Um, towards, uh, just towards Iceland and Greenland. We begin to drag in the wind from a colder northeasterly wind, switch the wind round from the plus five isotherm to the minus five isotherm. It's pretty chilly there, blocking the Atlantic, bringing the winds in from a cold northeasterly. Now, with the icon next, um, high pressure again topples away to our east, 
Uh, low pressures out to the west, bringing in the wind from a mild south southeasterly wind up to around the 9th of March, when high pressure begins to migrate out towards Greenland and Iceland, and we begin to bring down the winds from a cold north or northeasterly wind. Now, what you'll notice there is that there is actually quite a decent cold pool to our east. If we can tap tap into that cold air, we could see some interest. With the minus five line, it's difficult to predict whether there will be rain, sleet, or snow um, in the forecast. During the daylight hours, um, it would most likely be rain, but you couldn't rule it out because the air masses, again, the sun strength's getting milder, getting warmer uh, as we go throughout the March into April with the spring sunshine getting getting warmer, as I said. Um, so it is more difficult to see um, any colder, wintry hazards, but it's still possible. March 2013 is a prime example. End of the month, bitterly cold air, and there was pretty um, interesting impacts from that. But the icon looks pretty cold um, up to about the 12th of March, from the 12th of March onwards. Okay. So with the GFS next, this is the, the most anticipated model run by many. You can see that we have high pressure centred to, again to our east, low pressure out to our west. Very deep area of low pressure. Bringing the wind from the south southeast. Then the wind switch around to the northeast by the 11th of uh, March. In a big flip from the GFS recently to more colder conditions. Favoured. Bringing that wind from the north and northeast. That high pressure topples out to our west. And eventually that it doesn't last long. We go more Atlantic driven. More zonal, westerly, quite mild. Wet and windy. Maybe even a bit stormy. GM next is also very similar. High pressures move into our east. Low pressures out to the west. Winds from the south southwest. Um, south southeast and <laughs> looking pretty mild then up to the 9th 10th of march high pressure sitting out just to our west bringing in the wind from a chillier northeasterly there's more of a high pressure influence with this kind of more sat over the top of the country um keeping it mostly dry but quite cold and frosty by the end of the run high pressure sat over iceland beginning to drag in the wind from the southeast now to me that high pressure is like beginning to blow up like a balloon as i call it up towards iceland beginning to drag in the wind from the Quite a decent cold pool over Scandinavia for time of year. As you can see, there's some big blues appearing on temperature deviation, suggesting some quite cold air that way. <laughs> um, which means that we could tap into some of that, and it could be quite cold, possibly even a little. Now we're going to swap websites here, and we're going to go to the ECMWF. Um, now we can't show out fully, but we can see what the general synoptic pattern is for the latest 12Z run up to day three. So. <laughs> The high pressure out to our east, low pressure out to our west, winds are in from the south. And then there's um, not much interest there, but we can also have a look at the midnight run here. As you can see, a uh, very similar pattern. High pressure out to our west, low pressure out to our east, winds go into the northeast. Looks pretty cold and wintry. Up to day 10, we have high pressure out just over the top of the country, dragging in the wind from the east. Looks cold, looks blocked, looks pretty wintry and interesting. I do say so myself. Now, if we have a look at the ensembles, we'll have a look at Birmingham today. Um, this is because we normally do. <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, at the moment we are above average. Men and above average for the next week, so looking pleasant, get your jobs done. Um, and then turning a little bit colder through the next, um, through into the next week, the second week of March, um, uh, there's a big dip, and that is becoming more significant. Remaining below average up to the 18th, not fully out yet, but again, past about day 10 is the unreliable time frame. Many of these runs drop into quite cold levels, minus 5 and below. Between about minus 5 and minus 8, there's quite a big clustering of runs. Uh, the GM, again, very similar, dropping down to about the minus 5 line. And um, pretty decent. If I have a look at the 2 meter temperatures, they are dropping um, to about 5 or 6 degrees per minute. Again, cooler or colder as you head north, with the possibility of some winteriness. If you have a look at the snow depths. There's not much going on there for Birmingham, but again, um, it's up to monitor. It might pick up as we go along. Um, but yeah, that's 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 it, really. Um, so yeah, turning colder next week is pretty likely. The sudden stratospheric warming is looking pretty strong. Uh, could even be a little bit wintry, dare I say, next week. But anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you appreciate that I've done seven attempts at this video um, with my record software corrupting and you being a bugger. And I do apologise for the video being out later than anticipated, but... We can't control these things, can we? Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in a minute. Bye, everyone.